हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस बिटुमिनस थिन सरफेसिंग एंड देर आर सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ थिन सरफेसिंग लाइक प्रीमिक्स कारपेट सरफेस ड्रेसिंग स्लरी सील और मिक्स सील सरफेसिंग एंड माइक्रो सरफेसिंग टुडे वी विल डिस्कस माइक्रो सरफेसिंग स्लरी सील वी हैव डिस्कस इन अर्लियर डिस्कशन नाउ माइक्रो सरफेसिंग इज ए होमोजीनियस मिक्सचर ऑफ मोडिफाइड बिटुमेन अमल्शन वाटर well graded mineral aggregates and additive polymer is commonly added to the asphalt emulsion to provide better mixture properties micro surfacing is a protective seal coat which extends the life of pavement it is a thin tough layer of asphalt emulsion blended with finely crushed stone for traction and this is a cost effective method to renew the road surface and seal minor cracks and other irregularities in the pavement Micro surfacing is an advanced form of slurry seal that uses the same basic ingredients that is emulsified asphalt, water, fine aggregate and filler and combines them with advanced polymer additives. Now the major difference between slurry seal and micro surfacing is in how they break or harden. Slurry relies on evaporation of water in the bitumen emulsion. The emulsion used in micro surfacing contains chemical additives which allow it to break without relying on the sun or heat for evaporation to occur and that is the main difference between slurry seal and micro surfacing therefore micro surfacing is an application that hardens quicker than slurry seal and can be used when conditions would not allow slurry seal to be successfully placed streets that have a lot of shade and streets that have a lot of traffic are good candidates for micro surfacing Micro surfacing is applied in order to help preserve and protect the underlying pavement structure and also to provide a new driving surface. Roads chosen for micro surfacing application generally have low to moderate distress and narrow crack width. The applications of micro surfacing it is used as surface sealing treatment to improve skid resistance, surface durability it seals fine and medium cracks on existing bitumen surface this is laid on structurally sound pavements but the pavements which shows signs of premature aging aggregate loss cracking and high degree of polishing generally it is laid in single layer but when existing surface is highly polished or cracked it can be in two layers also Micro surfacing can be used for preventive maintenance as well as periodic renewals for low to medium traffic. It can be used for pavements in urban and rural areas, residential streets and toll plazas. It can also be used on top of single coat of surface dressing or on premix carpet without seal coat and also on dense bitumen macadam. And there are two types of micro surfacings based on thickness of the layer. the type 2 and type 3 here type 1 is not mentioned because type 1 which is in the thickness of 2 to 3 mm is not suitable for micro surfacing now this classification is similar to what we discussed in slurry seal so type 2 is used for roads in urban and rural area in residential streets as preventive and renewal treatment in a in conditions where traffic is not more than 1500 cvpd whereas type 3 is used on primary and interstate routes highways and runways to give maximum skid resistance and for preventing or renewal treatment when traffic is 1500 to 4500 commercial vehicles per day the quantity of mix required for type 2 is 8.4 to 10.8 kg per meter square and for type 3 which is laid in a thickness of 6 to 8 mm is 11.1 to 16.3 kg per meter square and the residual binder which is measured percent by weight of dry aggregate should be 6.5 to 10.5 percent in case of type 2 and 5.5 to 10.5 percent in case of type 3 the binder Bitumen emulsion shall be a modified, either polymer modified or latex modified bitumen emulsion, conforming to 
requirements given in this table. The modified shall be polymer rubber, polymer or rubber, preferably synthetic or natural rubber latex blended into bitumen or aqueous phase of emulsion prior to or during the emulsification process. The viscosity at 25 degrees centigrade should be 2200 second. The particle charge positive. Stability in 24 hours should be maximum of 2 and residue by evaporation minimum 60 percent and test on residue the penetration softening point elastic recovery ductility and solubility are given in this table the aggregate the mineral aggregates or crushed stone which are free from dust organic matter or any other deleterious substances are to be used the sand equivalent value of aggregate should be minimum 50 water absorption not more than 2 percent and soundness with the sodium sulfate solution after 5 cycle the loss should not be more than 12 percent and when it is tested with magnesium sulfate the loss should not be more than 18 percent. The grading of aggregate for type 2 and type 3 the for type 2 type of micro surfacing the nominal size of aggregate is 4.75 millimeter and for type 3 it is 6.3 millimeter and this should be well graded aggregates with higher percentage of fines. The filler will be ordinary Portland cement and generally it is in the range of 0.5 to 2 percent by weight of dry aggregates. Water portable tap water will be used which is free from harmful salts and contaminants the pH value of water should be in the range of 6 to 7. Chemical additive to accelerate or retard the break set time is used or to improve the resulting finished surface. The quantity of additive shall be decided by the mix design and is to be adjusted as per climatic conditions such as humidity and temperature at site. The design and proportioning of mix when more than one type of aggregates are used proper proportioning will be done to achieve desired grading and you can use any of the methods which we discussed earlier in another video on proportioning of aggregate to determine the proportion of individual aggregate in the final mix. The compatibility of aggregate, filler, emulsion and additive shall be verified by mix design for a selected grading and the design criteria which are given in IRC SP81 2008 are like this that mixing time should be minimum 180 second consistency maximum 3 centimeter wet cohesion within 30 minutes should be achieved 12 kg centimeter and wet cohesion within 60 minutes should be around 20 kg centimeter wet stripping not more than 10 percent and wet track abrasion loss after one hour soak should be 538 gram per meter square maximum now these are special tests which are not conducted in any other mixed design and therefore I will explain these tests briefly. Now the mixing time. Mixing time is intended to, to determine the breaking time of emulsion in a microsurfacing mixture. And you need a steel ball, a spatula, beaker, a measuring cylinder, a spoon and balance. So take about 1 kg of graded aggregates plus kneaded cement in a bowl and chemical additive and water are added together and then the, this required quantity of water is added to the mixture of aggregate and cement. Then mix it vigorously to get homogeneous paste. After that add required quantity of emulsion and mix again till the emulsion starts breaking and mix loses its workability. The time required for breaking the emulsion is the mixing time. The minimum time required for initial breaking of emulsion is reported as the maximum mixing time. The second test is consistency test and this test is to determine the consistency of microsurfacing mixture. It requires a mold in the form of frustum having the diameter at top 38 millimeter and at bottom 89 millimeter and height is 76 millimeter. Now this is the type of mold which you need 
for consistency test. A flow scale with seven concentric circles printed on a sheet of paper or maybe on a metal sheet which are supported by a rigid surface. The central circle is equal to the diameter of the large opening of the cone that is 89 mm and each additional circle here is 1 cm greater in radius than the previous one. The mixture is placed in the cone. The cone is removed and mixture is allowed to flow over these inscribed circles until flow of the mix stops. The outflow of the mix is measured at four points which are 90 degree apart and the average is recorded as the slurry consistency in centimeter. The third test is wet cohesion test. Now this test is used to determine the curing time of microsurfacing mix for complete cohesion. The setting time taken corresponds to the time between the casting and setting of the material. And for this you need a cohesion tester, a steel mold of 6 mm or 10 mm thickness and the twisting torque is measured on 5 samples of the same material at appropriate intervals after casting. So a suitable number of identical specimen are cast. After setting of the mat, it is placed beneath the pneumatically actuated rubber foot of the cohesion meter. We apply a pressure of 193 kilopascal and then twisting torque is measured on 5 samples of the same material at 30 minute and 60 minute interval after casting. And then a cohesion torque of 20 to 21 kg centimeter is required within 60 minute and a cohesion torque of 12 to 13 kg centimeter within 30 minute. So this is the test, wet cohesion test. The fourth test is wet stripping test. Now this test is used to determine the compatibility of microsurfacing system with given aggregates. Test is simple. Test is simple. You need a 600 ml beaker hot plate with adjustable temperature absorbent cloth and high wet strength paper. So we take about 400 ml of tap water in a 600 ml beaker and boil this water on a hot plate. When the water is boiling, drop 10 gram mixture of cured microsurfacing in boiling water for 3 minutes. After that remove the beaker from the hot plate and cool the water to room temperature and also add cold water on the surface of the beaker so that free bitumen flows over the side of the beaker. Drain the water and remove the content from the beaker and place on a white absorbent paper or on a towel. Examine for uncoated areas and report as the stripping value. Now this test is similar to a stripping test which we do on aggregate bitumen mixture. The fifth test is wet trap abrasion loss test. Now here you need a planetary type mechanical stirrer which is equipped with a weighted rubber hose holding device having free up and down movement in the shaft sleeve. Flat bottom metal pan to secure a 280 mm diameter specimen to bottom of the pan and metal circular mold of 282 to 285 mm diameter and 6 mm thick. So for conducting the test Take the sufficient quantities of individual component that is aggregate, filler, water, bitumen emulsion and additive as per design to obtain a sample of 1000 gram. Mix them well and prepare the specimen in the mold. Now place the molded sample in the oven for 24 hours at 60 degree centigrade to obtain the constant weight. After that cool the sample at room temperature and determine its weight and then it is tested. Now for testing of this specimen, we first assemble the test head using the screws. After that you place the specimen and clamp this specimen to the base using four clamps 90 degree apart and then you fit the test head 
in the abrasion machine using a screw fill the water and after you fill the water this cover cover the water bath with a splash guard and then start the test after the test is over the test is done for 5 minutes after the test is over screed the top level of the specimen and discard excess material remove the specimen after the test and place it in oven for 24 hours at 60 degrees centigrade to obtain the constant weight cool it to room temperature and take the weight and report the loss in weight in gram per meter square and what irc says that this loss should not be more than 438 gram per meter square now weather limitations for microsurfacing microsurfacing is not applicable for air temperature below 10 degree centigrade it is applicable when pavement and air temperature are above 8 degree centigrade and it is rising it is not applicable when the finished product freezes within 24 hours now this is the schematic view of a microsurfacing machine here crushed aggregates are fed from this bin and cement additive and water are added here they are mixed together and after proper mixing of these ingredients then polymer modified emulsion is added here then this mixture is loaded on the spreader box and this mixing time is around 15 to 45 seconds and then from a spreader box it is laid on the pavement surface at the time of laying this mixture is brown and homogeneous and breaking time of this mixture is 60 to 120 second and after that this mixture becomes black this surface can be open to traffic in approximately 2 hours and that is the calibration of microsurfacing machine calibration basically means that the correct quantity of all ingredient should come out and proper mix should be done proper mixing should be done that is the texture of freshly laid microsurfacing that is how it looks you can see the skid resistance very high skid resistance and that is surface condition after 24 hours so friends thank you very much for watching this video you can write your comments to in the comment box and subscribe to my channel